Oh, it's always a big night. Love Landers Award night. We have some great players here. Left to right, let's see if I can get them all right. Zach Kelly, receiver, Pulaski Academy. Brockton Brown, running back, Sheridan. TJ Hammonds, running back, Robinson. David Beasley, running wide receiver and cornerback for Pine Bluff. Fuller Chandler, quarterback for Harbor High School. Kaysen Mertens, quarterback for Benton. Taylor Powell, record-setting quarterback there for Fayetteville. Back there, started in three championship games. Ladarius Skelton for Pine Bluff, and Alex Day, the fine junior running back for North Little Rock. You guys a little nervous here at all? No? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, just <laughs> smooth, smooth under the Friday night lights and relaxed here. Only one could take home the big trophy, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you guys try on. Landers Award ring. Darren McFadden has one. Ooh. Peyton Hillis has one. And one of you guys will have this Landers Award ring. You can get some pictures now. Alex, you can pass it along. Just don't get it stuck on your finger, okay? Uh, we'll we'll allow pictures. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. 6.30 to 7, live on Channel 7. Nothing but live TV. We have 11 great finalists. My hope is this will be a memory that will last a lifetime for these kids. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. We're just a couple of floors upstairs. Great food. After the news, 5 o'clock, you can check in up here, get a meal, and go back to the 6 o'clock news. I've got the game plan for you guys. first or second round. Uh, Alti Tenpenny, uh, you might have read his story. He passed in a car accident. Uh, great kid, great smile, you see in that page. And the, uh, on the right side, I have to find out, it's Austin Allen. He's probably gonna be the quarterback at Arkansas next year. And you never realize, and now my memory's so bad, that when I see pictures from 10 or 15 years ago, it's like a new world to me. But if you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers play and he's healthy, D'Angelo Williams is the Landers Award finalist our first year. He actually lost to Darius Howard, who had an incredible career at West Memphis, didn't have a great Razorback career. But we're looking for the best high school player. And I, I choose the weekly winners. I do my best to look at all the stats of the paper. And I think today, my, my greatest regret today is the kids I left out. You know, I look at Fuller Chandler, and I, I left out his running back. I mean, great, great athlete. Um, I think Little Rock Christian, Damari Crockett could be here. I think in Nashville, I think Snell, the quarterback, could be here. I think of Greenwood, uh, Morgan could be here. Uh, there are so many good athletes, but I'll put these 11 kids right here who are so valuable to their teams that I feel good about every one of you. And uh, there's no one-week wonders here. We have a great group, and I'm going to go quickly on how the night is going to go. Uh, how about our catering here? Great food. We have the if you can feed Keith Jackson, you're all set. I judge, I judge how we're going by how the plates are, how big the plates are. It's a big night for me because 16 years of doing it, uh, my wife's here for the first time. <laughs> 15 previous years, was never asked, have you done all your work for the Landers Award? Yesterday she said, you got everything done for the Landers Award. <laughs> Because she's going to be here, I guess. But, uh, I told her there are four cards right here. That's my preparation for Landers Award. I should know it by now. I want to thank Debbie Hook. Uh, this is where we have our our station meetings, and it looks nothing like this. But she, she did her best to dress this up, and uh, she did a, a fantastic job. She sent out all the invitations. Uh, she did all the legwork. We had nine judges who determined the winner. They ranked the players uh, from their best to their you know, least favorite, one through 11. And we had an internet vote that counted as one vote. Uh, and, uh, all as I can tell you about the votes, we have uh, Brett from Hudson Sisney. They went, one thing, they don't go through me. They go to Debbie Hook, and then she sends them to the accounting firm. And all I can tell you about the voting, it wasn't the closest vote, but it was the most competitive voting 
five different players receive first place votes. And that makes for a, an interesting room because it's a lot of guys that could go home with the big prize today. The big prize is a Landers Award trophy. Uh, wouldn't be possible without the folks at Landers who have been such a great sponsor. When you do this 16 years ago, you have no idea what they're going to be like 16 years or 20 years down the line. <coughs> what our station's going to be like, but it's been a great marriage, and the, the award has kind of become the high school Heisman. And one thing I don't allow from our judges is any, uh, any Central Arkansas bias, or, you know, I want every kid in Arkansas to have a chance to win the award. And we've had winners from South Arkansas, Warren, we've had them from Northwest Arkansas, Brandon Allen, uh, Drew Morgan, Tyler Wilson, uh, we've had them from uh, Northeast Arkansas, West Memphis, Darius Howard, and I want it to be some award that goes to the, the best player. We have a pretty good room right here. It will go down at uh, about 6 o'clock because I have a live shot at 6.07. Seating is limited in the studio, but the look is so much better. We used to do it across the way, and nothing like the excitement of live TV and the lights in the studio. And I encourage you, we don't have a newscast until 10 o'clock. So afterwards, take some pictures. Uh, you can sit on the news set, you can do whatever. I mean, just get pictures of different finalists together, family pictures, there'll be something you'll look at five or 10 years from now, hopefully treasure. We got like two guys in Pine Bluff, you guys are gonna go in different directions. You're going to Louisiana Tech, you're going to Southern. Uh, we'll get some great pictures tonight. You know, to, uh, y'all dressed up tonight. Represent <laughs> 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 Pine Bluff. All right, here's, here's how I, uh, here's, here's, a, here's a list you'll go in, and we'll go in the order that you were featured this year. And when I wanted to pick my first guy, uh, Player of the Week, and we, we, we feature kids weekly, I wanted to get a guy who I knew was gonna be good week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, and he didn't let me down. Where's T.J. Hamilton Robinson? Exciting player, uh, uh, can do it all. Any idea where Arkansas might play you? Running back wide receiver. Running back wide receiver, can return kicks, can do it all. It's a great story, a kid who worked very hard become an elite athlete and uh, really represented the Landers Award well this year. Congratulations on this season. Very deserving. Uh, uh, second week, uh, David Beasley, if you want to stand up. He's uh, uh, I really respect a guy who plays on 6A. He plays wide receivers, probably one of the most talented wide receivers. The skeleton would just throw it up to him in the end zone. <laughs> so, yeah. But then he plays the cornerback on the other side of Coach Bobby Bolden. So if Bowley wants to yell at the other guys, we trust you. But uh, outstanding athlete on both sides of the ball. I think Louisiana Tech is getting a great player, a tall wide receiver who is best under the lights. And I uh, wish you well, Louisiana Tech. Thank you. I really hesitate. Corlo Jackson is the next one at Parkview. He's not Robinson, but I really hesitate on doing juniors. And I've got three this year. I don't know what happened. But uh, I personally sh shoot games locally, and I got to watch Parkview play. And uh, this guy, athletically, and his poise on the field is uh, unmatched for his age. Uh, he's a big kid. He took a beating this year playing in that conference. Kaysen can relate. And you had better blocking. I was playing Pine Bluff. I saw Pine Bluff. Dad was offensive coordinator, and he must have he must have scheduled too many passes downfield because uh, Coylan took a beating and kept a smile on his face. And uh, he's a guy you're going to hear from next year, and just an outstanding athlete. Not a natural quarterback, but did a terrific job leading Parkey's attack. And uh, proud to have you as a Landers Award finalist. And uh, you're going to you're going to be at the end a much better athlete than your dad. <laughs> Maybe not as great a player. I'll take a new house. <laughs> I said athlete. And I would also honor, I'd also honor one of your brother, Kenyon, would stand up there. Uh, but if we honored linemen, he'd be one of our finalists. I really feel bad. Uh, but they had a special bond playing together this year. And uh, what I like best about you two, and it's a credit to your dad, is the uh, attitude you have on the field. You're two happy kids. And uh, really enjoyed covering Parky this year. And good luck at Robinson. Robinson's getting a great receiver next year. Fourth finalist, uh, Brockton Brown. Uh, he has the best highlight of all the Landers Award finalists. Uh, Beasley, look at him. He ran away from your defense. <laughs> it's like second play of the game. He went 80 yards. I would have gone like Forrest Gump and just kept running. <laughs> but uh, what a terrific season you had. Uh, 2,162 yards, and you knew when it was Sheridan, and it's, it's almost harder when you're the guy. And he was the guy at Sheridan, and he produced week in, week out, excellent student, and uh, you couldn't represent the award any better, Brockton, and uh, a great finalist. And I had no idea 
this kid was going to be a finalist this year. Well, Lewis, unfortunately, Coach Campbell, I don't go to Sheridan. You don't think of teams that win Sheridan. Usually the finals come from <coughs> highly successful teams, but Sheridan stepped up, was highly competitive, and Coach leaned on Brockton Brown this year. That'll be our first group. Our second group is led by quarterback from Fayetteville. I got a first chance I got to see him was in the uh, championship game last year. He played a spectacular game last year. Uh, and this year he won the state championship with Fayetteville. I think he had like 41 touchdown passes, like seven, seven interceptions. How many? 49. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ridiculous number, 49 touchdown passes. And uh, only a junior, I can't wait to see what you do next year, but that's just, uh, I don't know how you top 49 touchdown passes, seven interceptions, and a state title. But uh, you're a very driven young man, and uh, glad I made the trip to Fayetteville because you're very deserving of uh, Landers Award finalists. So Another guy who just jumped up this year. I didn't anticipate him being a finalist, but Alex Day, will you stand up? Uh, well, Jamie Mitchell gave straight out, said, if I need a yard, I need two yards, I'm giving it to this guy. And uh, just got better and better, and I checked the paper, that'd be 100 yards, 150 yards, 175 yards. Ended the year with 1,800 yards. And uh, North Little Rock continually got better, and you were a big reason. His brother is Jawan Day uh, with uh, Arkansas, and he was a Landers Award <coughs> finalist. So you're the second Landers Award finalist in the family, and you got another one coming up there. And only a junior, but I'm looking for big things from you next year, too. Alex Day. <laughs> Fuller Chandler, uh, Springdale Harbor. Harbor was kind of the great story this year. Uh, Northwest Arkansas was kind of like the SEC of high school football. And I think people were more anticipating Fayetteville being the king during the regular season, but it was you guys coming up with just huge plays, especially at the end of games. and. Uh, well, you were the difference maker, Coach told me, this year as far as your poise, your leadership, and I know you didn't have the greatest game in the championship <laughs> game, but I don't think it could uh, discount what you did in a terrific senior season. Only one year at Harbor, and you had a great year and great mm -hmm. memories, and it's hard to move your, that fourth year to come in and run a team, and you did just such a terrific job, and I'm glad you're here as a Landers Award finalist. Cool. <laughs> Next athlete is Cason Mertens of uh, Benton. And one thing I wasn't going to do was let injuries uh, discount a person as a finalist. He led Benton further than they've been in a long time last year. It was uh, in a wide open, Scott Nethery likes to chuck it around the ballpark. And uh, he was the quarterback. And uh, this year, got injured in August, came back, and had, had another fine season. But uh, threw for, I think, accounted for over 4,000 passing yards in his career. Just had a terrific season. and. Uh, very deserving Landers Award finalist, and there's, uh, I have uh, great respect for those kids that have overcome injuries because there's nothing worse for even a college athlete, but I can't think of a high school athlete when you get, have to be away from the game, you're a two sports star, be away from two sports for four or five months. But uh, congratulations and a very deserving finalist. Anything, uh, about the only thing worse, at Pine, I don't think it's anything worse in Pine Bluff than losing a state championship. Coach Bolden can tell you that. Tell you that. And Ladarius Skelton was a sophomore starting quarterback when they lost the state championship game. And uh, you know, I, I bet you took some grief that year. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, he—it's how you dealt with that grief. He came back and he was the MVP of the 6A state championship game as both a junior and a senior. Boy, I salute you. And when that game was on the line. Uh, Coach didn't have you handing it off in the championship game at Greenwood. He just told you to go with the football. <laughs> very deserving finalist, Ladarius Skelton. <laughs> and the bar is set even higher for the lower classification kids. Uh, like TJ is in the mix at 4A, but uh, I, I have to judge, and most of the better athletes are going to come from 6 and 7A. But I learned a few years ago, if you transcend your class, like Kenneth Dixon, when he ran in that championship game for Strong, he ended up second in the Landers Award voting there. I saw that was a, a different athlete. And uh, this year, uh, Cecil Langston of Rivercrest, uh, he rushed for over 3,000 yards. I mean, I don't care what level you're running. And uh, it was Cecil right, it was Cecil left, it was Cecil up the middle. Uh, and Cecil just ran, 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 ran. And, I don't think coach anticipated him rushing for a thousand or two thousand yards. He ended up rushing for three thousand yards, and uh, he's also a—you'll uh, hear in his piece—he's a volunteer fire department for Luxora, so he's uh, <laughs> doing it all. But uh, you're representing the small guys today at Class Three A. Around the room, Randy Williams, come on over. Randy's 
Randy's another one of these good ones. He didn't ask me to, to pay for anything. How many years ago did you call me? Uh, 12, 13 years ago? Yeah, I think so. He said, I want you to design a ring for the Landers Award winner. So here's what we came up with. It's a beautiful ring. And each year he's been always a, right there just giving us a champion ring. The great thing about that ring is only the winners have it, like Darren McFadden. Williams. You really resize it, right? Correct. Absolutely. Steve, right. it's a, it's a well, though. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then Landers is providing a $3,000 scholarship. But depending on whether, if our winner has a scholarship, it'll go to the school and they can decide on books for other kids or divide it up, do what they wish with that money. But uh, I think that's a nice gesture of Landers. And, uh, oh, I forgot my last final. <laughs> I get, I, I, my mind is all over the place. Uh, uh, without a doubt, another kid who overcame injuries and would have been the state's all-time leading receiver if he didn't go down with an injury. If you watched uh, Friday Night Touchdowns, this guy has an unbelievable motor, and I'll put him pound for pound, uh, even up against Beasley, although Beasley's 6'3", 6'2", 6'3". This guy can flat out fly, put up incredible numbers, played the second half of the championship game with a broken kneecap and uh, missed part of his year with a torn ACL, and uh, he's still flying by people. I didn't notice anything was wrong, but uh, tremendous desire, uh, came, overcame a lack of size to put up huge numbers, and I know he's gonna be credit to OBU, but I'm proud to have Zach Kelly as a finalist. Probably should have been MVP, I think. <laughs> Are you on crutches or legs tonight? Uh, legs. Legs tonight. All right. Good. But I want to congratulate all the finalists. We give out one special award each year. It's the Paul Eels Award. Uh, Paul was not only like a Hall of Fame broadcaster, he was the greatest guy. And you young guys probably didn't get a chance to experience any of his touchdown calls. Uh, he had a call that could lift the spirits of the entire state. And each year I pick a a, we pick a player to honor that kind of fits the ideals that Paul represented. And, uh, and first, and, first and foremost, people forget how good he was as a broadcaster. So we went with a real good player this year who has an incredible story, uh, McTel Benagin from Hope, and uh, probably the best college prospect in the state. He's up in Fayetteville now and couldn't make it tonight. His coach, Jay Turley, is here. But Kyle, uh, who does the weekend sports, does tremendous stories. And he went down to Hope and did a great story on uh, McTelvin, and that story will air on the, in the middle of the show tonight. Coach will accept for McTelvin, but uh, I hope he knows and he can read up on Paul Eels. Uh, this is one award we take very seriously and um, really want a kid who represents the award. And I think McTelvin will be a guy that uh, boy, everybody will enjoy seeing his story and one Paul would be proud of to be honored. But we'll work our way down to the studio at about uh, uh, six o'clock. I see a general set of folks here. Mark Rose, uh, our general manager. Kyle, come on, Kyle here. A better in the back. Here he is. <laughs> well, here we are. We have videos we run, we, we run weekly on the, on the Landers winners. Uh, previous 15 years, I got lazy and ran the same ones. Landers. I figured the kids were excited to see their videos. It's say like, rush for 100 yards last week. Well, he made me go back and all the last weeks are out of it. All the videos are current. <laughs> So that will make the show better, and he did it for the show, not himself. And uh, it's great to work with a guy like that. And he put a lot of work into the McTell and McGee story, and uh, you see his talents and what a great story he is. But it's a fun half hour, moves very quickly. I mentioned Channel 7, Mark Rose, our general manager. It helps that he loves football. And uh, this is an idea, I guess, you or Dale came up with uh, 16 years ago. And Anne came up with it. Anne. I'll oh. blame it on her. <laughs> what a great award. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but I credit Channel 7 with supporting. We also do. Uh, can all the coaches stand up, please, that are here tonight? <laughs> I think it's great that we get the support of the coaches in this award. And the uh, guys are mainly. Uh, overworked and underpaid and uh, I, I look around the room and see guys that have done great works for community great work for communities and uh, I don't think you can this day and age uh, put a value on having say how many kids you have Pine Bluff out about 80 kids doing something you know bigger than themselves being part of the team they can have memories and time that'll last a lifetime and learning great life lessons and that's the the common thread you're going to hear in all the pieces is uh, what was the favorite thing about Friday night? And it was the camaraderie. 
you know, it was, uh, it was hanging with the guys. And uh, the, those are the memories, I think, that are most special in high school football. And uh, we just have a great group tonight and looking forward to a lot of fun. It starts at, uh, we'll get that to be downstairs at 6. And my man Popeye, another, one, another guy just helps me out. Don't call him, but he'll put a, a great video up on YouTube afterward, the Landers Award behind the scenes. And look on KTV.com for Dwayne Duncan's pictures right there. They'll be on the Facebook page at first. Facebook page is at, uh, yeah, KTV yeah. Facebook. Yeah. 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 Facebook page. Yeah. He takes tremendous pictures. But it helps to have friends like this because I don't ask them to come. I mean, they just show up and they create the memories. But it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a fast-moving half hour. We'll go down the studio at 6 o'clock. Uh, and one thing, the seating is limited. It makes for a, a neat area. But um, it's going to be only a, I don't, I don't really know how many seats there are down there. So it's going to be more of a, I don't know what, Good Morning America hangout. This is the first time we've done anything like this. And uh, since we revamped our studio, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, looking forward to it. It's excitement of live TV. Thanks to Landers. There's no commercials during the half hour. So we just fly. And we've had years where, you know, things happen. It was last year, I believe. I forget. I forgot to export one of the videos, yeah. and it was three players hanging. And I found out like two minutes before the thing was going to air, but uh, someone exported it, and every, we changed the groups, and it, it worked out. That's the excitement of live TV. Anything. Else. All right, I've rambled long enough. Uh, at six o, at about six o'clock, we're going to get the athletes down there because I got a live shot at six o seven. the news people and the weather folks and replace them with 11 of the state's top high school football players. Let's hear it folks for our Landers Award finalists. <laughs> we start with the guy representing the small schools this year, Cecil Langston of Rivercrest. Above him, Sheridan's record-setting back, Buck Wild, Brockton Brown. Next to him, the junior from North Little Rock who ran wild this year, Alex Day. Kaysen Mertens took Benton to a new level. Coyler Jackson, Outstanding junior from Little Rock Parkview. Now with Robinson, I'll explain that later. Taylor Powell, 49 touchdown passes this season. Fuller Chandler led Springdale Harbor to new heights. David Beasley, just throw it up and Beasley will go get it for five to love. TJ Hammond, smiling, he's a future Razorback from Robinson. Zach Kelly overcame two surgeries. He did a terrific job for Pulaski Academy, one of the state's top receivers. And above him is Ladarius Skelton, quarterback in three state championship games, won two state titles. I'm bringing in now a guy who probably would have won this award if we had it back in about 1983 or 84. Yeah. Keith Jackson, come on over, big Keith. All right, buddy. You're here not only as a spectator, but a dad. It has to be exciting to be watching Coyle and be honored. Well, I'm a little jealous that you didn't have an award <laughs> when I came out. Now he gets bragging rights on me. You know what? I'm looking at all these superstars back there, and what I want to do is I want to start a team and play against any team in the state next week. I'll take these guys and let's go to work. What a fantastic award. 
you volunteer at Parkview, you, you see what these kids do, you have sons that play, uh, football's changed. Uh, these kids go year round. They sure do. They got to be ready. These coaches are year round. I mean, I applaud the coaches. They do a great job of getting these kids in shape, getting ready for football season, and enduring all that physical uh, stuff that they've got to do during the season. It is unbelievable the job that these guys can do every day, day in and day out. While all the other students are enjoying and having fun, they've got to get ready for the next game. All right. Congratulations on the work you do as a dad and the work you do with Park. You do Thank great you. work for young men. Thanks. All right. Settle into the studio I there. Will. Almost ready for the show. Live TV at 6:30. On go time, 6:30 live TV, 30 minutes. Unfortunately, only one can take home the big prize, the Landers Award. But you're going to see features on all 11 of what made them so special this season. The winner will take home the Landers Award trophy, a check for $3,000. That's a scholarship check from Landers. And if I can find it, I hope I haven't lost it, guys. Yeah, it's the Landers Award ring from Jostens. I will give this up by the end of the show. Back to you guys across the street. Landers Award. The and tonight, in honor of the best of the best, KTV presents the 2015 Landers Award finalist. Here's Channel 7, Steve Sullivan. And welcome to the KTV Studios. It's without a doubt one of my favorite nights of the year. Hard to believe this is year 16 for the Landers Award. The stars of the show, just to my right. What a good looking group. So quiet, they were making so much noise before the show. <laughs> One question for these guys. I noticed Keith Jackson, a dad of Orland Jackson, is here. He was a former Parkview star, best player of the state that year. Darren McFadden, you know Darren McFadden. Peyton Hillis, NFL players. Outside of being NFL players, what do those three Arkansas high school stars have in common? Anybody raise a hand? No? None of them want to stay behind. This is the ultimate team game. And I want you to do me a favor. I'm seeing you with your cell phones. Sometime tonight, or during the show, or when you're on your way home, I want you to text a teammate, a coach, and tell them thanks. Uh, he'll feel better, and you'll feel better. Okay, so it's going to be Taylor Powell, Alex Day, Fuller Chandler, Casey Murchis. Powell has a lot to play for. Come on now. Get their awards. All right, so I'll tell you what's going on. It's, uh, Alex Day, North Little Rock. I'm not a day, running back to North Little Rock. I'm a choice, I'm a third brother. Now, Alex Day becomes the second Lambs finalist of the Day family. The other, race back, tailback, Jawan Day. I think that just, uh, as you were know, uh, I had an older brother. Taylor Piles, Alex Day, Casey Martin. Or Cole Chandler. Let's hear it for our first group of Landers Award finalists. Right here. Let's start with Taylor Powell. 49 touchdown passes as a junior. How does it feel to follow such greats as Brandon Allen, Austin Allen, and be the guy running the show for a state championship offense? Well, to be the quarterback of Taylor, there's expectations. Um, there's been great quarterbacks before me, and uh, I got to thank the coaches and the players around me for putting me in a situation to go out there and I was, I mean, score a touchdown, but the thing is, it wasn't me, it was the guys around me. They were making plays for me and the receivers and the coaches. I mean, it's all a team effort, it wasn't just me. All right, Alex Day, be honest with me, no one's watching. This is the best back of the day of you. Go ahead, part of me. There you go. That's what you want. What has it been like uh, being in a football family like that? Uh, it's just amazing. You know, uh, my dad tells us stories about him playing back at Marvel High School. And everything. I listen to him, but I think I'm probably better. <laughs> but uh, this is amazing. You gotta believe it. The best team from Harvard High School, one year at Harvard, it took them to a record season. That had to be exciting. Oh, it was definitely a fun year. You know, I wouldn't say that I took them that level. Harvard always had a great expectation. You know, our head coach is outstanding, Coach Wood, and then you know, the players there are always awesome. I know Mom's proud of you tonight. <laughs> yes, she is. And Casey Burton, so you know, I'll live that uh, bachelor comment. No, they kind of, at school, everybody was always talking about it. I mean, the Badger guy, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing it's not it. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, congratulations on uh, coming back for an injury. I mean, that's the hardest thing a player has to deal with, guys. You know, the way that you try out the Landers Award ring, Justin's designed especially. One of you is going to leave the studio with this. It's one of the group, I don't want to pick a winner right now. You can try it on here and work your way down the line as we introduce the next group of Landers Award finalists. Here they are. 
Okay. Let's hear it for this group of finalists. All right, the studio supports the beat down. The Darius Skelton, two times, 6A state championship MVP. How about the moment upstairs getting to share this night with your grandparents? Uh, it was great. It was great to be here. And I thank them for everything. They brought me through the last time I was doing. All right, Cecil Langston. Uh, you want to drop down and show me your push up for me? No, uh, I'm just kidding. You're here for all the small school guys. 3A. Covered a guy years ago from River Crest, and he was elite Tyrone Henry. Now I'm going to mention Tyrone Henry and Cecil Langston in the same breath. How does that make you feel? Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you for being here and you know, being a good player. And you are the single season all time rushing leader. Yes, sir. Pretty impressive. Yes, sir. All right, well, congratulations. So what's what's worth the deal with defenses with a lot of bright lights on TV? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Zach Kelly, uh, what a career at Pulaski Academy. And you're representing all the guys and folks say, not big enough to play football, but 5'8", 5'9", five, five, maybe 150 pounds, and uh, one of the top 11 players in the state. Oh, well, thank you. That's a big compliment. We're we'll probably about 5'7". Uh, seven. So, <laughs> um, you just got to be smarter and be quick and uh, know the game plan, really. Just a lot of study. Well, you're one of the toughest guys to say you have broken kneecap you're dealing with tonight in addition to recovering from the ACL surgery. But congratulations to all three finalists. All right, one player tonight will receive a very special award. Paul Eels was a Hall of Fame broadcaster at Channel 7. He was a better person. Paul loved playing his award night. This was 2008. You see Mitch Mustang, Damian Williams. I get nervous on Landers Award Night. Paul had a special way of putting everybody at ease as he made his way to the second group there. We miss Paul. We honor his memory each year with the Paul Eels Award. This year we're honoring a very special athlete who has an incredible story. Kyle Deckelbottom does a terrific job. Come on over here telling stories on Channel 7 to present this story. Hey, so it's not to present the Paul Eels Award. It's not often that the Paul Eels Award goes to somebody who I think most people consider as the best college prospect in the entire state. But tonight we honor Miguel McGee, the hope defensive end for what he's done off the field to get here. And Miguel McGee is already in Fayetteville. He was practicing with the Razorbacks even before the Liberty Bowl, which is very rare. He can't be with us tonight. His head coach down at home, Jake Turley, is. Congratulations. I'm going to accept this uh, on his behalf. Thank you. He is a great, great kid just getting to speak with him for a little bit. And the story that strikes me that we didn't mention in there is when Brett Bielema and, and some of the Fayetteville coaches came down to Hope, he brought them by his house because he wanted them to see it. That's an important part of who he is. It is. You know, he, he wanted to see where he came from and, and how hard he was going to work to get out of that situation. And he's, and he's done something. What do you say about how hard he has worked? Because you, you've seen it from, from the very beginning. I mean, he's, he's, he's the reason he's where he is. He's, he's been in the work and weight room in practice field and, and in course in the classroom. Well, we're just the best of luck up there. Coach, I appreciate it. Congratulations. You guys have a party. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Coach. We're in the home stretch. These some of you guys look bored. Look on the smile here. We have uh, four more to go. Your thoughts so far, Taylor? Northwest Arkansas, what do you think Lambs so far? I don't think it's just truly an honor to be here with such great guys and great players. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's just an honor to be with all these guys. I mean, I can't believe that I'm here as a junior. Um, I think, like, my parents are putting the deal with me all through the season, and my coaches are being able to put me in a situation out there and play on Fridays, and my teammates are being out there on my side and competing every Friday. And how about Pine Bluff over there? Two Landers Award finalists right there, hanging in the corner, looking sharp tonight, gentlemen. We have four more Landers Award finalists to feature. They're coming up next. Here they are, final group of Landers Award finalists. Good looking group right here. TJ Hammonds, you talked about those early morning workouts with Coach Poppin. Uh, how early and what'd you do? Um, you know, um, at first it was hard to wake up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, she's like, let's go, you ready? Let's go, get up. He's just like, I'm super loud right in the morning. But, you know, I love them and, uh, you know, I got used to them working up in the time in the morning and, uh, you know, they helped me get home. Get that scholarship from the University of Arkansas, that work worth it? Yes, sir. <laughs> David Beasley, uh, you mentioned the challenges your brother faces in life. Has he been, has he been an inspiration for you? Yes, that's since I was little. I, I remember when I used to go on a, not even just football, playing football, I would go on a basketball, in front of the house, play basketball. He used to tell me like little moves I could do to help my game in basketball. I used to watch him play football in the front yard. It was just, you know, good on him. He was there for me throughout my whole high school career. Kind of, I mean, um, Julian, yeah, you'll be going to uh, Louisiana Tech. Yes, sir. 
And Coyle Jackson, uh, talk about not only playing with your dad, but getting to play a couple seasons with your big brothers going to University of Illinois in Kenya. That'd be a great experience. That'd be some good battles, too. He was one. He couldn't hit me, though. <laughs> dad didn't let him. He was like, what about Exactly. Yeah, he was so couldn't hit me. But uh, playing with him, maybe he pushed me more. Like, when I did something bad, he told me it was not that good, or I couldn't do this. And he, that, him telling me I couldn't do stuff, maybe push myself more to do. At the end of that, at the Be crystal with that call the pleasure, say no, we're running this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. Uh, Brockton Brown, what a great career. You mentioned in your piece that uh, your dad was a motivator for you, and he was an outstanding back for sure. And uh, obviously, it has to be uh, great to follow in his footsteps. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, ever since I was little, you know, people in the community come up and say, hey, your dad was a really good high school football player. And so, you know, most of my junior high career, I was like, man, someday I'm going to be like my dad. You know, now people um, talk about me when I'm four years old, you know, kind of like a legacy for my community because I love Shannon. I saw your dad. He could not run like you, but he... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great group. I'm going to have you guys retire to your stools, and it's time to narrow this field from uh, 11 to 1. Time to name our Landers Award finalists. I want to congratulate all of you. You're all winners, had tremendous stories, and we had nine judges who ranked the finalists 1 through 11, and we passed them along to a accounting firm, Hudson and Sisney. We'll get them up here in just a second. And uh, I want to now I want to bring up uh, Brett from Hudson and Sisney. I want to bring up Steve Landers Jr. I want to thank you for our relationship of uh, 16 years. I think Steve couldn't make it today, but what a great award. That was a lot of fun. We really, uh, it's a great accomplishment for these guys. We really enjoy this uh, this award. It's, it's a lot of fun to see, because we love, you know, we love high school football, always have, and uh, it's a big deal for our family, so good job, guys. Randy Williams with Johnson's, he's providing the ring tonight. Come on up, Randy. All right, good, the envelope, Brent, don't you? Live TV. I want to thank Hudson Sissy for being here since year one. The winner of the 2015 Landers Player of the Year Award is Pine Bluff quarterback Ladarius Skelton.